bother whether I have genius. This is why I write large that I'm a derivative poet. I had never any question that I was a poet uh, after I announced that to the world and myself when I was 17. And then I knew that was my business and I fought off even teaching, because, not because I thought that it was impossible to teach and also write poetry, but because I knew of myself it was. I, I think everybody has a life instinct, that is, they know, if you don't know when you're 17, you may not know what to do with it, but you do know by your 17, let's say, how you feel. Nothing in me was temperamentally satisfied or going to be satisfied with the propositions that were presented by conventional forms. Sometimes they're referred to as academic forms, but this is a very wrong use of the word academy or academic. In many ways, my mind is academic. It relates to an academy in poetry. But conventional means that the first line of the poem provides a model or a convention, and the second line behaves the same way, and the third line behaves that way, and then you also, in the initially in the poem, you have a convention whereby you know throughout you're going to have four lines in every stanza, and you know throughout, often you know how many stanzas you're going to have, and within that you compose. Now, this is quite contrary to my temperament. You know, I think the only thing the American artist needs, uh, it, it's a great misunderstanding that you give them a fancy grant for a year. What they need is to know that they don't have to meet the grant every month. Of course, today that's astronomical, so it's asking for a hell of a lot. With, on my mother's death, um, a trust fund was set up that in, from which I have had an income of $275 a month. Uh, I really... Uh, um, I could, could hardly extort myself with reality, though it didn't take me long to do so. Uh, and and uh, it's part of what governed how we would take this house. The dance, from its dancers, circulates among the other dancers. This would have been feverish, cool excess of movement makes each man hit the pitch, coordinate. Lovely their feet pound the green, solid meadow. The dancers mimic flowers, root, stem, stamen, and petal. Our words are, our articulations, our measures. It is the joy that exceeds pleasure. You have passed the count, she said. Or I understood from her eyes. Now old Friedel has grown so lovely in my years. I remember only the truth. I swear by my yearning. You have conquered the yearning, she said. The numbers have entered your feet. Turn, turn, turn. When you're real gone, boy, sweet boy, where have I gone, beloved? Into the waltz, dancers. Lovely our circulation, sweet in the meadow. In Reuben's riotous scene, the May dances teach us our learning seeks abandon. Maximus called us to dance the man. We called him to call season out of season the mind. Lovely, join we to dance green to the meadow. Whitman was right. Our names are left like leaves of grass, likeness and liking, the human greenness, tough as grass that survives cruelest season. I see now a radiance. The dancers are gone. They lie in heaps, exhausted, dead tired, we say. They'll sleep until noon. But I returned early for the silence with a lovely pang that is a flower, return to the silent dance ground.
That was my job that summer. I'd dance until three, then up to get the hall swept before nine, beer bottles, cigarette butts, paper mementos of the night before. Writing it down now, it is the aftermath, the silence I remember. Part of the dance, too, an articulation of the time of dancing. Like the almost dead sleeping is a step. I've got it in a poem about Friedel moaning in the depths of. But that was another room that summer, part of my description. What I see is a meadow. I'll slip away before they're up and see the dew shining. When I first uh, faced the proposition that I was a poet, an odd proposition, I was in high school, uh, I sort of announced it to myself. My family you know, w uh, wanted me to uh, go on in architecture, and up to that time, which was my 16th year, um, shortly, uh, shortly after my father's death, uh, uh, up to that time, I had been centered in architecture. From my being centered in the idea of being an architect, which was uh, my family's idea uh, to go on in my father's uh, footsteps. In my 17th year after his death, I suddenly was no longer centered in mathematics, house plans, architecture, and discovered in the high school reading and through the enthusiasm of a high school teacher of the possibilities in poetry, the dramatic monologues of Robert Browning, that oh, it, it really uh, something more importantly me uh, w was there, not in me, but there in Robert Browning, um, and and what the poem opened up suddenly a recognition that this is where my person would be. Now I see person almost entirely as a voluntary act a naming of oneself. Yet it must have that edge of mystery that I w w would, would think of as merging into the divine world, the one that we are very familiar the Indian has, but he has to go out and find his name. In some way, uh, I initially, instead of going into a forest, I, oddly enough, went into an English literary course and found my name lingering around in Robert Browning. It seemed to me very clear when I was 17 or 18 that, that I would not be able to uh, have two professions. But this means, of course, that I took poetry as a profession. Where it appears. I cut the warp to weave that web in the air. And here, let image perish in image. Leave writer and reader up in the air to draw momentous in conclusion. Robes of the first water returned by a rhetoric. The rain swells. Statistically insignificant as the locus of creation, I have in this my own intense area of self-creation. The sun itself, insignificant among suns. The magi of the probable bring forth a mirror and iridescent, an ocean, which I hold in the palm of my hand, as if I could cast a shadow to surround what is boundless, as if I could handle this pearl that touches upon every imagination of what 
I am. Wrong about the web, the reflection, the lure of the world. I love. Poetry for me is a primary. That is, it's as primary as, and no more so, than walking around the room. Household has frequently been proposed in my mind as primary, having priority even over my art. I'm a householder. A person who isn't a householder wouldn't take a household that seriously. Uh, all the time, I really wanted to find, my whole idea of being able to work was to have a household like after all my father had from which his architecture could come. Uh, that must be a considerable part of the picture. I accepted that entirely. I returned to it. It's an odd version of it, true enough, but, but uh, it's cluttered like our family house was cluttered. It's filled with a million interests going, and many of those interests I've carried over, translating them into my terms. I think the question that disturbs most people about this derivation is, that I am very much a bookish poet. I am deriving from, from something that is on a page. I've given you an idea of it, but along with this, it may be that I was shy of and unsure of the extent and way in which I derive myself from the world. Uh, well, I imitate my father in this and I tend to architect things. I remember uh, uh, that by the time I was 10 or 11, uh, I was doing, uh, an architect deals in choreography. You have to imagine how you move through a house and how a number of people move around a house when you're putting in doors and windows. And in a funny way, my, my um, uh, uh, po poems have floor plans. When there's a lifestyle, it's somebody's playing life. I continue to play house because it never settles down in my mind. And, and I play my art, too. Most important uh, uh, and difficult, I find, to explain to Europeans, it must be a purely American thing around books. I'm uh, likely to behave uh, very much as if I were in Oz. Uh, one of the reasons librarians seem to have a fight against Oz, it teaches what they call irresponsibility. And if that's irresponsibility, fine, that's exactly my responsibility. It's called being where you are even when you couldn't be there. Green data. The young Japanese son was in love with a servant boy. To be in love, don't you remember how the whole world is governed by a fact that embraces everything that happens, rendering tender and more real the details of the crowded dressing room, backstage, a closet off the hall, an office or storeroom where furtively, among file cabinets, but with what joy of disclosure. Every gesture was overfilled more than was sensible. And youth in love with youth. Tomorrow they will be 20 years old, and being in love will go into the aloofness the mother in the dream counseled. Hold yourself above your body, she said. The unstained sleeves of raw silk falling from her arms flung dramatically above her head to show her defiance of, of caring? Or was it defiance? There was, did she say, an aesthetic stronger than sex? And below, the prince in, in his laboratory, assisted by the boy, experimented in sensations used as conductors and sink stoppers he applied to the flesh of the face, bringing it in touch, a mechanical ground in place of hurting. Beyond. Through an open door they referred to tanks or cribs in each which male torsos. At the eve of August, Lammas tide of desire, deformed, mutilated, they were objects of or subjected to preservation, 
without love, dead in being alive, alive dead, inhabitants of Lamas, bathers in hell's baths. These, the prince said, when I was in love, were always with me where I was. What is most interesting to me is that uh, only in the very recent years of the gay liberation have I reflected upon the fact that I actually uh, may have been determined all along uh, by my uh, repeated coming up against um, uh, the social prejudice uh, against uh, homosexuality and certainly in my teens and early twenties, when much of my behavior was uh, trying to be uh, alluring, however that went, uh, it, it was fatal uh, socially, no matter uh, how that went. And, 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 and one did not want to know that all the time, at all. Um, now I get a kind of, uh, uh, I mean, it gives me a, a, a vast amount of uh, relishing uh, subject matter. But it was, uh, but to be the victim of it then was not at all unpleasant. Uh, but it isn't even pleasantness. Now I, I did have typing as a major skill, but when I went to apply for jobs in New York in the 40s, uh, I came up against uh, two aspects of what happens to a uh, an identifiable homosexual when he goes for a job. One is you ain't going to get the job, and the second is you is going to get the job, but for very interesting reasons. <laughs> In both cases, I preferred to wash dishes or uh, uh, something else. Uh, and, uh, uh, a, a, and only coming back to university did I find a, a situation in which no one was asking that heavy question of my getting a job. In 1940, I had been in the first draft, before there was a war. I had registered as a conscientious objector. Uh, I had given uh, uh, a testimony uh, when asked about my religion. I was Taoist, and I suppose I would still have a position very remarkably resembling Taoism. I remember uh, it, was the, it was a board of, uh, uh, in, of uh, inquisitors uh, in the village in New York, and uh, I was a bearded, uh, uh, hairy youth, uh, bearded uh, along the line of, uh, of uh, thinking about Taoism all the time and, uh, 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 and wanting to uh, be a shaman and various things that w are really not so different from many uh, uh, people today. Uh, it's interesting to know that in 1940 we were still there, although there weren't that many of us. And the uh, Board of Inquisitors, of course, had the same attitude toward us that such Boards of Inquisitors have toward any uh, young person today. They asked me about Taoism, and they said, but that's not an American religion. <laughs> and, uh, well, I think, oh, no, they said, that's not a religion. And I said, uh, well, a third of the world's populace follows it. And they said, but it isn't American. Uh, I, but I was a Taoist, so I read my Lao Tse, and it said, go to the bottom, and so I went on into the army. I didn't challenge that decision. And then, I, in order, and, and then coming right out of the army, I went through the psychiatric uh, uh, trip and was um, certified uh, uh, non-usable by the army. Well, uh, actually, the Army kept giving me every choice to take or not take this discharge. And they tried to get across to me uh, w what, this discharge, wh what this discharge involved. They were a little appalled by the time I'd been around for several months. They, they really offered me every op uh, option, including being trained for an officer. And, uh, uh, I, but I said, no, I wouldn't have gone through the humiliation of going, that I had to go through, by the way, in order to even get to, to, to the point where, I got the di where the discharge papers were there. And so I walked out of the army with the discharge papers that any homosexual walked out of the army with in those days. And I have a little blue piece of paper that certifies me for the rest of my life 
as a sexual psychopath. Um, it, it, so the, that one I knew, if you came to it and they want to see your, your discharge papers, no, you don't want to see your discharge papers. Uh, it, it, this whole aspect may have governed a lot of, uh, it, I can look back and realize, yes, I took, I, I only sought jobs in the area in which this would not come to question. But just as importantly, when I was 18, 17 and 18 and in love with a college professor and living with a college professor, what I saw there was the double life that homosexuals lived in the academic world. And I knew that th another thing about myself that was, after all, a strength, and that was not, not the picture would I have two professions, but one thing I was never going to have, and maybe I was not capable of it, but certainly I also had a moral conviction against it, I was not going to have a double subscription. I was not going to have a double life. Whatever I chose, and, and uh, I would be and stand by it. And so uh, poetry then really became something. I've spoken of it as a profession. Poetry really became my entire way of seeing life. If there's something questionable about me today, it is that I cannot undo some conviction there must have been in it that, uh, that the real nature of life itself is reading, that is, we read the world, and writing, that is, we contribute to the world. I think we imitate in, uh, in, our, in what we call reading and writing, we imitate our actual living. Uh, we imitate what goes on throughout the universe. Uh, it seems to me that what we call language is taking sounds of our mouths, and and use and organizing them so that we use them in order to do what we find everything in the universe doing, and we produce a sh thing as surely shapely as a tree, which is language. Uh, it can be diagrammed. It grows like a tree. Our every bit of our knowledge of language and 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 the entire expanse of human beings lives in this. Goes over and lives in this proposition that I I can't see as. Um, as in any sense, anything but the primary place of, not only of consciousness, but of being. Structure Rhyme 1. I ask the unyielding sentence that shows itself forth in the language as I make it. Speak, for I name myself your master who come to serve. Writing is first to search in obedience. There is a woman who resembles the sentence. She has a place in memory that moves language. Her voice comes across the waters from a shore I don't know to a shore I know and is translated into words belonging to the poem. Have heart, the text reads, you that were heartless. Suffering joy or despair, you will suffer the sentence, a law of words moving seeking their right period. I saw snake-like beauty in the living changes of syntax. Wake up, she cried. Jacob wrestled with sleep. You who fall into nothingness and dread sleep. He wrestled with sleep like a man reading a strong sentence. I will not take the actual world for granted, I said. Why not, she replied. Do I not withhold the song of birds from you? Do I not withhold the penetrations of red from you? Do I not withhold the weight of mountains from you? Do I not withhold the hearts of men from you? I alone long for your demand. I alone measure your desire. O lasting sentence. Sentence after sentence I make in your image. In the feet that measure the dance of my pages, I hear cosmic intoxication to the man I will be. Cheat at this game, she cries. The world is what you are. Stand then, so I can see you, a fierce destroyer of images. Will you drive me to madness, only there to know me, vomiting images into the place of the law? Uh, for me, I, um, uh, my imagination is always springing to life immediately with words. Words are things for me. 
and 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 so when it comes to be a word, uh, it's realized. And yet I, uh, in, in, for one thing, I know what I call words. Uh, my uh, cat has some vocabulary. Wherever my cat is interested, he understands my words. When he's not interested, he pays no more attention than my would-be readers pay attention when they're not interested. I can't make the word moon mean more than a vast host of human beings have put into the word moon. More than that, I can't do more for the poor reader than the, than the reader's got in the poor reader's mind for moon, oddly enough. Uh, uh, if, if a reader were thought I was glorious, that one's got to come out of the reader's own manufacturing of this term called glorious. Uh, well, of course, we do also comment that when they think I'm an idiot, that has to come out of a certain fund of uh, that possibility in the reader's own uh, operations. But I'm amazed at the size of um, uh, uh, public that I have, uh, but I attribute it largely to the fact that um, I'm used in cl uh, literature courses so that classes buy the, buy the book. Uh, I can't imagine that Duncan would have landed in a place with uh, 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 10,000 sales without being a perennial in uh, teaching classes. And that won't go on forever because uh, they, after all, uh, so at some point, I won't be the contemporary when they're teaching it. Meanwhile, the reader and I are both dealing with words. And the words happen to be a communal property. That may be why, more so than paint. I don't grind up words and make strange dollars in them. They, they happen to be the words that are all around. Let's go straight into spelling. And if you look at the top, you'll see that the description is that in your imagination, this is a poem to be performed. It means that in this poem, we get to be in the, in, in the height of the poem. We find ourselves where we all were, because in, in, we're in a system of compulsory education, in a classroom, lo and behold. And in our dream, we get to go and demonstrate on the board, but we don't really know what we're dealing with. We're in a kind of an in-between. He, spelling. He did not come to the end of the corridor. He could not see to the end of the corridor. What came beyond, he did not know. Christos, chronos, chord are spelled with chi. Not Kappa. Christos, 